what are the different kind of skills that you need in order to become a cloud engineer. So let's go ahead and get started with the agenda guys. So first we'll understand why you should actually go ahead and be a cloud engineer. What are the perks of being a cloud engineer? And after that we'll understand what does a cloud engineer basically do, right? So we'll understand various job descriptions. We'll see what are his day-to-day -day responsibilities and then we'll understand how to become a cloud engineer by understanding the skills required to become a cloud engineer. And then finally, I'll be talking about a learning path through which you can gain all those skills. So guys, this is the agenda for this session. I hope it's clear to you. Now let's go ahead and start off with why you should actually go ahead and become a cloud engineer. So guys, cloud engineer, if you want to become, there are three things that I want to talk to uh, you about. First is the kind of job opportunities which are out there. Second is the kind of salary which a cloud engineer gets. And third thing is who all companies are hiring for basically a cloud engineer. So these are the three things that we will be talking about. So let's go ahead and start off with the first thing, which is what are the different kind of job opportunities which are out there, right? So when you talk about job opportunities, guys, if you search for a cloud engineer right now, you will get 2600 plus job positions which are vacant and if you just talk about bangalore which i am situation uh, situated in there are 900 plus job positions just in bangalore similarly in the us it's a lot more so in the us uh, if you search for a cloud engineer or a devops engineer the salary is around the, the kind of uh, jobs which are out there are around 21000 plus and even the job positions which are out there are 1200 plus Right now, you might be wondering the title of the slide is why become a DevOps engineer. So, guys, cloud engineer and DevOps engineer is an interchangeable term, and let me prove that to you. So, let me basically go ahead uh, to indeed.com and on indeed.com, let's search for cloud engineer. So, when you search for cloud engineer, just see the kind of what are the first job that you get. You get a DevOps engineer job. What is the second job that you get? You get a DevOps engineer job. What is the third job that you get? You get a cloud engineer job, right? Then you get a cloud engineer again, but then you again get a DevOps Kubernetes engineer. So cloud engineer and DevOps engineer term is basically interchangeable, right? You can use it, uh, you know, interchangeably. And that also speaks a ton about what are the skills required to become a cloud engineer, which I'll be touching upon in a few moments, but yes, uh, what are the different kind of job opportunities for a cloud engineer? You have the number over here and similarly if you talk about the salary of a cloud or a DevOps engineer uh, in India he can earn between 80,000 to 1 lakh on an average and he can earn even more than this as well but this is an average uh, that a uh, cloud or DevOps engineer basically earns. Similarly in the US he earns around $11,250 to $16,000 that would be the ideal range of a cloud or DevOps engineer in the US and in India. Now talking about, uh, you know, how you should actually uh, calculate your salary or what companies you should actually apply for when you're trying to become either a cloud or DevOps engineer, you can basically, you know, follow this matrix. So if the ki kind of company that you're applying to is basically a product based company and you get hired, you can basically expect the salary to be on the higher side. However, if you are going to a service based country uh, company, in that case, the salary can be on the lower side. And the sole reason for that is when you deal with a service based company, the same company is providing your services to multiple companies. Right. So how much profit you make to the uh, to, to the client company does not matter because it's a service contract that the company has. Right. So you are expected to perform good. But when you work for a sole product, you are basically, you know, uh, you, you are basically given incentive on the basis of how good or how long you can make that particular go just with the help of, uh, you know, your inputs in the company, right? For example, if I own a company and I hire you and because of you, my website has become a lot better. My performance of the website has become better and that is directly impacting my business. I would obviously, uh, you know, reward you in terms of uh, salary benefits. But let's say if I'm a service-based company, so what will I do? I will basically outsource cloud engineers to companies who know cl need cloud engineers for some work of theirs. Now over there, how well I perform, right? I might get a 
letter of appreciation from that company i might uh, you know get that the i'm the best cloud engineer that they have heard from from that particular company but that is the most about it the company that i am working for right that company does not care how much business is their client doing right some some service based companies probably might have an incentive but i have not uh, you know basically heard of any company giving an incentive to a service based company based on the fact how well you know their it guys are performing so that would be one why the salary is uh, a different sorter then you have something called as years of experience so if you have around 0 to 5 years of experience you can expect a certain salary range however if you have around 5 to 10 years of experience you can expect a different salary range now this is again debatable uh, so the number that i have mentioned over here 0 to 5 years or 5 to 10 years is solely on the basis of how much uh, you know skilled you have become in the job work that you do so even a guy who has learned cloud and devops for 6 months and he has learned it through and through he has learned it the best way that he can right he can still perform better than a guy who is probably working in the cloud and devops uh, domains in the past 4 years so it's all debatable and that's why even companies these days they don't consider the years the number of years of experience as a basically a criteria when they are hiring a candidate right if the candidate has answered all the questions if he has all the experience obviously he would be preferred over a candidate who might have more number of years of experience but does not have uh, you know the same kind of uh, technical skills that this guy has right and the third thing is your potential and your personal skills so how well you can uh, sell your resume how well you can uh, you know uh, skill yourself in the job that you are applying for that matters a lot and that would actually decide your salary as well moving forward who is hiring for a cloud or devops engineer so all these companies these are all fortune 500 companies who are looking for um, um, you know a cloud or a devops engineer right and uh, if you you know choose to go in this domain these are some of the top companies that you can apply for but obviously the list doesn't end here even a startup these days who has now had a successful product and is now looking to scale would need a cloud or devops engineer to scale otherwise they cannot scale until and unless they uh, you know uh, they they outsource that service which seldom is the case uh, with startups which that is usually the case with mnc's but yes they would require a cloud or devops engineer uh, moving forward now that you have understood that cloud engineer is such a in demand right and uh, they are so important to so many companies what is exactly that a cloud engineer basically does let's go ahead and understand that so talking at the job descriptions guys again i have taken job descriptions of cloud or devops engineer so here you can see there's a job by oracle for a profile called devops engineer and what they are expecting that person to know is all these things which are highlighted in yellow so if i were to take a note of these uh basically you are expected to know about apis you are expected to know about linux operating system uh build tools such as gradle or maven git bitbucket jenkins other ci cd tools and uh, obviously cloud so you can see experience with working with cloud infrastructure and when they say cloud infrastructure you know top 3 cloud providers aws azure and google cloud platform if you know any of these three it will work out for you some companies expect you to know even more than one right and uh, we'll talk more about uh, you know what are the different kind of skills but this particular company at oracle uh, uh, the job profile at oracle is basically expecting you these skills moving forward at vmware uh, you know you are, these are the skills that they're expecting you to know they are expecting you to know aws big ip dyn route 53 which are all uh, cloud services then they're all expecting you to know devops tools such as terraform such as docker such as jenkins they also expect you to know cloud automation softwares right so these are all the different kind of skills which are expected right similarly uh, at amazon if you're applying as a cloud or devops engineer uh, they will expect you to know linux cloud uh, databases java or c++ so if you were to basically sum down the kind of skills which are required from a cloud or devops engineer based on the job descriptions that we just saw these are the different kind of skills which are basically expected 
all right so we have ruled out google cloud over here because it's the third largest cloud provider mostly 90 percent of the companies which have their infrastructure on cloud uh, will either have it on aws or will have it on azure right uh, companies which are dealing in the public cloud domain right so these are the two kind of uh, cloud providers that you will see them use some also yeah. have their own cloud infrastructure such as some use OpenStack, some use uh, digital ocean as well yeah. some use alibaba cloud as well so it's all there it's on you you know which company that yeah. you're applying to okay moving forward what are the day-to-day -day responsibilities or roles of a cloud engineer so first of all you will have to uh, you know create a devops pipeline for them what is DevOps, what it exactly it is, probably that is for some other session to be. But DevOps is basically, you can understand it as a skill which is required to uh, make the software development life cycle very smooth. It automates that life cycle, it automates that pipeline. So you have to make sure that the pipeline is running smooth. Uh, you have to make sure that the interaction between the technical team members uh, is very clear with respect to the requirements that are required for a particular job. Uh, you know you have to work on any testing backlog which is there and you need to figure out a way to automate it uh, you have to manage the infrastructure which they have on cloud you have to manage how they can migrate their legacy systems onto cloud such as AWS or Azure you have to figure out um, how to train the existing uh, team that you have on the technologies that you know for example if you are trying to implement DevOps in a development team, you will have to teach them about what is Jenkins, you will have to teach them about what is Docker. And when all of this is done, only then, you know, they will be able to go ahead and work with stuff. And again, documentation is also something that, which probably you don't have to do, but you will have to get it implemented from your team, how to document everything, how to make it sustainable, whatever product you're developing, how to make it more sustainable, so, so that even if uh, the team changes in the future, they should be able to understand and work on the product uh, that you're basically developing okay okay now let's come to the fact that how to become a cloud or devops engineer okay so if you go ahead and learn all these skills you can go ahead and cover 95 percent of the skills which are uh, basically expected from a devops or cloud engineer so you should have an understanding of all major devops tools you should have an understanding about cloud infrastructure you should have an understanding about architectures, how they are developed, production architectures, best practices. You should have a knowledge about that. You should be able to automate the DevOps pipeline. You should have uh, experience with databases. That is not expected from all the jobs, but uh, a little experience here or there will help you. Uh, you should also know one scripting language mandatorily. You should either know Python, you should either know uh, you know, uh, you, you should either know R, you should either know PHP, you should either know Perl, any scripting language will work, but you should know one because that helps uh, when you're trying to automate something, right? So these are, uh, you know, probably the most, uh, uh, ni like I said, 95% of the skills are written on the screen. If you gain these skills, you can apply for a cloud engineer job. Having said that, what is the learning path? How do you go ahead and learn all these skills? Now, there are various ways, guys. One is that you can learn on your own. You can practice everything that you want. Uh, you can just take a screenshot of the screen and just work on them one by one, right? Now, there can be some hurdles. I understand you guys, that you guys are already working, that you already have a full-time job. So how do you go ahead and manage with this? So to make it your life a little easier, we have some blogs, we have some videos that we have posted on YouTube, right? You can go through them uh, with respect to the skills that I just talked about, right? Understand them. Uh, I mean, they, 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 that will be definitely give you a Kickstarter, if not, you know, prepare you for the job. It'll give you a Kickstarter about each and every technology that we discussed. And you should be able to, uh, you know, grab at least the basics so that it, when you now want to practice the advanced stuff you can actually go ahead and uh, you know practice on some website like hacker earth or any other website where you can practice your probably programming skills like for example if you're learning scripting or you can download a vm and learn ubuntu or centos or any other programming language sorry linux operating system like that 
right so these are all the free resources that we give you now apart from that we also happen to have a professional course that you can opt for and this professional course has all the skills that we just discussed so i have a colleague over here who's going to discuss that so over to you please go ahead and discuss uh, you know these skills